Hey there aces, Fenro Darkfing here, today joined by Cosmic Afro. Hi! That is not as much that's as one way to in That's one way to introduce myself, isn't it? Just like, <laughs> hi! How's it going? Fair enough. Anyways, um, I haven't been doing uh, Aspects of an Ace in a while, and the last one was Aspects of an Ace Growth, wasn't it? So... For a while now, I wasn't able to come up with a proper topic. And with a recent friend of ours, Mr. Spirit, leaving the Team Fortress 2 scene for some personal time, we thought it would be appropriate to reinforce an idea that every player, and every person in general, should have some concept of. <laughs> Aye, and that's the ability to turn your own personal weakness into your own strength. Obviously, that will have you challenge yourself in some way or another, but, well... Once you get around to fighting that own shadow of yours, you'll grow to be a more experienced and more confident person. How we know? Well, both of us have some, let's say, personal experience uh, with the whole matter. You want to start out, Afro? I shall, sir. I feel like the first major issue for most people is gaining that initial bout of confidence. It's like it's like getting a train going. It takes a lot of work to get that initial push, but it's much easier once you're on the rails. With the advent of the internet, people are more exposed to creative and amazing works more often, and it's had this weird adverse effect that has people saying, well, I'll, I'll never be like that guy, or, oh, that's so cool, but I will never be that talented, though. Which is... silly. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, I've had my fair share of people asking me how to use a video editing software, which one to use, and then they're being like, I'll never get the hang of it, even still, even though you keep getting them to giving them tips, right? So, I'll tell you what I told them back then. Listen, you people, and keep that knowledge in you. Never forget this. Everyone started somewhere at some point. No one is born a master. And it's plain dumb to want to be the best from the start and never feel the sense of victory you get from improving. You people are your own story's protag. And what good story has its main character start out with his final form? Seriously, don't sweat it too much if you aren't amazing yet. Practice. Keep at it. You'll grow. Uh, exactly. It, it's, it's like that artist that you like didn't wake up with a paintbrush in their nose and go, By gods, I, I must paint all of these trees! It's, no, that doesn't happen. It takes... It takes time, unless you're Bob Ross, but it, it takes time, and we all start off being bad at something. Even the people who seem to have a natural talent for some things, they still have to make leagues of improvements over the years. And that's where we're going to begin. Before you can improve, you have to know what needs improving. We'll start with a, well, less practical and more personal side to the concept of turning weakness into strength. For example, my parents got divorced seven years in the past. There's been a lot of rumors, intrigue, lies, betrayal, a mother that slowly has her personality shattered, and a 14-year-old son who sees her crying, unable to console her even a bit as he's not being taken serious at all. This son gets hit by a feeling of regret over not being able to do a thing, of being useless. Regret that leads him to feeling guilt, loathing himself at first even. An inner weakness, a burden he carries every day for the next year or so. Someday, however, he stopped just pitying himself and burying himself in self-pity over his inability to help. Instead, he uses his own regret to grab determination to change that status quo. He starts listening to people's problems, actively giving them advice or consoling them. Day by day by day, his personal regret slowly turns into something entirely different. Empathy. That and the will and strength to actually help. He took his weakness. He took what dragged him down and used it to improve, 
to change, to grow as a person. And I'm damn sure that boy, me, is not the only one who is able to do such a feat. Uh, and since you ended up sharing yours, I'll go ahead and toss mine into the pile. Or, uh, I, fun fact, or maybe not so fun, is that I'm not supposed to be... Uh, Alive? Most people don't survive after trying to swallow 150 pills, after all. But in uh, 2013, that's exactly what I had attempted. And through the magic of some divine intervention, hospitals, and a gallon of milk, oddly enough, I survived. And you might be saying, well, he sounds pretty cheery about this. Well, I mean, you ex just accepted what happened to be in the past, moved on, and grew from it, didn't you? Yeah, it's, it's actually exactly for that reason that I sound pretty cheery about it, that I don't sound, like, too downtrodden bringing it up, because over the course of four years, I've lived through that depression and worked on seeing that trait in others by finding people who I saw myself in, my previous self. I was able to help them open up to admit their problems and work towards a more stable and fulfilling future. I don't view that day as a weakness anymore, but a chance to see things from the bottom of the well looking up. Because it's it's terrifying, and I wouldn't want anyone to follow in my footsteps like that. And today, because of it, I am a much happier person. It never goes away that I did do those things, and I'm sure with Fenrir he won't forget those events either. But to say that they brought us down isn't correct. I'd say that they helped us form into more resilient, better people. Aye. This is where our video also ties into being a shout-out to that common friend of ours, Mr. Spirit, who, as he publicly shared, also tried to commit suicide a about a decade ago. And he's only alive right now because the rope snapped. I can't even begin to describe how glad I am about this turn of events. Either way, he also shared his own post-suicide story and how it turned him into who it, he is today. How um, he turned this into his own personal magnum opus, The Darkness of the Past video. If you want, you can watch that too. Link is going to be in the description down below. Anyways, let's go get back to more practical uses of the concept in a TF2 setting. Let's say you are naturally bad at flick shots. Well, I mean, the first thing I would normally say is that uh, you should probably just give up on Sniper and cry yourself to sleep. <laughs> Uh, um, or maybe actually, or that you can try finding training maps uh, like TR Walkway. But let's just say, let's just say that you've you've tried flick shots as much as you can, and no matter what you do, you, you just can't get the hang of it. Well, you might think that playing sniper is out of the window, and this is speaking from experience. I suck at sniper. It's not the end. Sniper is less so about fancy quick scopes or 360 huntsman headshots, but positioning. A good sniper will want to focus on controlling key parts of the map and prioritizing targets. Even if you could only land fully charged body shots, you'll still be keeping enemies at bay very easily. I dare to say that you do much better than most pub snipers who are always missing because they try fancy headshots all the time. I agreed, definitely. I mean, I personally fear a body shotting sniper more because it mean I could easily lose my medic to it. As a spy, I don't rely on the medic directly, obviously, but playing comp, I think, for all of the team at all times. So yeah, body shots on the medic, which are, frankly speaking, just enough to kill them, are definitely something a team wants to avoid at all times. Or having your own sniper being able to reliably produce a body shot when he sees a medic. Well, I mean, or that. But yeah, you know what I mean. Um, anyways, as much as people want to become as top-notch, fancy, and flashy as they can be, as it gets them all that glory, it's often also good to find strength in something less glorious and more simple and practical. So yeah, you find that flick shots are your weakness? Make lined up hard scopes your personal signature skill. You can't trickstab for, for days um, 
if you're playing spy, even, no matter how much you practice, good. Just stop doing trick steps and instead focus on your positioning and abuse of blind spots. Yeah, let the enemy team know they're playing with a sniper who, if you step into their line of sight, they will be punished. Maybe not dead all the time, but no sniper is 100% accurate anyways, and let them know that if they forget there is a spy wandering around, that you will definitely have their back. <laughs> uh, soldiers also make another great example. After all, well, Afro has every great soldier that you've ever come across been relying on flashy speed pogos or those fancy bombs. I mean, obviously, they're useful as all hell, but uh, I personally have seen terrifyingly fearsome soldiers running the stock shotgun and running a more grounded playstyle while protecting the medic at all times. Uh, well, it is true that a soldier who has sufficient knowledge of rocket jumping and is deadly in the hands of an experienced player any soldier who can actually hit their targets is far deadlier in my eyes. You might have seen fancy market garden montages, and the key word is montage. It's a context-sensitive compilation of various moments of success. And those amount to the moments that actually happen in-game where those happen are pretty slim. That's why they're just montages and only usually a few minutes long. You'll see soldiers jumping around for minutes on high tower before they have even a decent kill, let alone an intense streak of them. So if rocket jumping is in your forte as a soldier, that's okay. I do recommend that you learn how to do some basic rocket jumping and strafing, but if you're not a direct hit machine or a sentry sap, or, or if you are a direct hit machine, sorry, or a sentry sapping mangler, or your general awareness makes you an excellent medic bodyguard, do what makes you the most effective. Don't worry about everybody else. Aye, was that all, or, or is there anything else you still want mentioned, Afro? Uh, I guess what I wanted to point out at the very end of it is that you need to know what you suck at and accept, and accept that there are some things, realistically, you won't be as good as, as someone else. But that's kind of the beautiful thing about playstyles in Team Fortress 2. There's so much in there that you can work it out for anything, and that applies to life, too. Once you know what you're not good at, it's much easier to know how and where to improve, or maybe how to approach a certain obstacle. <laughs> uh, there's definite truth to that. Uh, I personally got a technical degree at an advanced type of school in Germany, but I went through that only to find out that technical science-esque stuff isn't my cup of tea, uh, not for finding a job based around it anyway. Um, the aftermath to me not getting the best grades at that advanced school was me doing voluntary work for the Red Cross, which led me to realizing I like to work with people, which led me to get myself an apprenticeship as a nursing student. And here I am, a nurse to be. And it's actually kind of funny, as we were writing or as we were going through this, thinking about the idea for this video, my associate's degree actually came in midway during production, so here's just like a quick little picture. Yay, boom, yay! I I'm an associate's guy now. I have a paper that says I'm good. Congrats, <laughs> yay. man. I'm, I'm really gr glad stuff's working out for you. Uh, I am too, and I'm glad that you're going to be all nursing and stuff. I'm gonna apply all these... IVs, you know? Anyways, <clears throat> that's been the second aspect of an ace. The ability and the daring disposition to take your weakness and use them to find something you're good at. Or to use them as an obstacle to overcome for further growth down the line. I've been Fenrir Darkfang. And I've been here too, I think. And this has been Aspects of an Ace. Have a nice day, and don't forget- Bye bye! Always stay the ace of your team slave.